Hello and salutations, my name is John Johnson and welcome to another episode of Majora's Mask. In the last episode, we got to the Great Bay Temple Dungeon thing and uh, made our way through some of the earlier rooms and as well as got a good many stray fairies. And we entered the episode right here in front of this ominous, er, in this ominous room, in front of this ominous door, and we stared at it omin omin om ominously. <laughs> and we're gonna go find out what's in it now. Which, you, if you're a Zelda fan, you probably already guessed. Nothing. Nothing is in this room. Oh, that's easy, but there seems to be a chest in the middle there. Huh. I don't see anything. What the? No, ah, that's creepy as hell. So, in this, uh, in this dungeon's continuous non-liking of me- What? <laughs> in- in the tradition of me not liking this dungeon, this is probably my least favorite, uh, mini-boss in the game. While I will say it's uniquely designed and cool and all that, it's honestly just not fun and kinda tedious. Get back- get back here, Bubble. All you do is basically you knock these bubbles off, and once you have enough of them knocked off to where you can aim, you shoot his eye as it's open. And I, I'll admit, I do this mid-boss mid kind of rec recklessly by getting under him like this. And as you see, I've already taken a fair amount of damage. But I am clearing the bubbles pretty fast, so that's good. And I'm very impatient with, with this mini-boss. Uh, mini but I do have a few fairies, so I'm not particularly worried about dying. I'm just going to clear a few off of here by doing continuous spin attacks. You can probably hear my joystick in the background. If you can hear it above me. Uh, if you have this strategy like I do, all you really need to do is keep a close eye on your hearts. Make sure you, do, you don't get too low, especially if you don't have any fairies. Uh, like I fortunately have. I prepared for this because I knew this was going to happen. Let's see how many I've taken off. You can also uh, come out from a distance if you don't want to get as close as I have. And uh, shoot them off with an arrow. They take one arrow to knock off and then one more arrow. No, stop. Stop. Please. Thank you. Oh, God. Right up on me. <laughs> they take one arrow to knock off and then another arrow to, to kill. So just keep that in mind if you prefer the distance fight. Ah, damn it. I was hoping to get him before he closes out. Alright, I think I've knocked enough of them off to where I can actually get a shot. And of course he opens his eye right then. No, dude! Thank you. Jeez. Uh, I believe there are hearts and magic and what have you, or hearts and arrows in those uh, jars if you need them. There we go. And I believe we only need one or two more. One more. Alright, and now we just kind of destroy all these bubbles as fast as we can uh, before he starts to ram around. Yeah, when all these fall off, they're not going to get back on, so don't worry about that. All you need to worry about is Chargy McGee over here Hit, uh, hitting you. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, what I normally do is take these bubbles, which is what I call them, even though they're not, that's not like the game official name. Take those bubbles out first, and then come hide in a corner. I don't believe he can actually hit you in these corners. Alright, wow. That was easy. I remember that taking more than one hit. That was weird. Uh, but yeah, I don't believe he can actually hit you in those corners, so if... It was when that second phase starts, it's a really good idea, at least in my experience, to uh, hide out in one of those corners and just kind of wait for him to face you with his eye open. I'm going to come around here and collect some hearts. Uh, for one, so I don't use my fairy, just in case. This game is taught, or if this LP has taught me anything, is that even as much Zelda as I have played and as big a fan of the series as I am, you can die. Yes, so I'm going to try and save my fairies, and also I just want to stop that annoying ass beeping. Alright, so, now that we've beaten the mini-boss, we can get the item. The Ice Arrow. Set it to C to power up your arrows. Now you can freeze enemies and objects. Try it everywhere. Literally everywhere. Try every inch of this game and freeze it. Nah, don't do that. Alright, and there's some more hearts out here if you need them. Uh, we already went all the way back up, so... Not too much problem. Like I said, this dungeon is pretty good about uh, giving you the stuff you need when you need it. Alright, we're gonna dive head first in here and hopefully not give Link a concussion. Hopefully not get hit by the uh, spitball over there. The Octorok. Oh, how I love Octoroks. <sighs> they're not that... Oh, no, and we're not gonna kill it. What we're actually gonna do... Octoroks aren't that bad when they're not in a minigame. <laughs> what we're actually gonna do a clever little mechanic here is we're going to freeze it. And I believe Tidal will mention... You know about the Octoroks, right? All you have to do is deflect that rocket. Okay. 
Well, the title will mention at some point that you can freeze these, and they turn into a perfect little ice cube for you to jump on. How convenient for us. Like I said, this dungeon has... What? How come you didn't... What? What? What was that? Link? Really? Ugh. Oh, now you explain it. If you could somehow step on top of that Octorok, I bet you'd be able to climb on that pillar. But the Octorok is so squishy and it keeps squirming around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this dungeon has good mechanics. Like, I, don't, I feel like it could have been so much better, but they overuse some mechanics, like, this le like these levers. And... Aesthetically, it's not that pleasing. It doesn't really look like a temple. It looks like a factory. It's just... I don't know. It's my least favorite dungeon, and I said I wasn't gonna uh, nag about it too much more, so I'll, I'll shut up for now. But yeah, it's just not my favorite, to say the least. And actually, let me double check. I know there aren't any fairies in the uh, mini boss room or the room before it, but let me double check here and make sure there aren't any just in case, because I, I've, 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 as I have said before, I hate backtracking. Yeah, there we go. I hate backtracking in Zelda games, especially in dungeons and temples, so we're going to avoid that as much as we can. Oh, wrong one. And we're going to head out this way, and lead. And I believe it leads right back to the main room, or the main hub. Yep. Wee, so now we can head right on back up here. Jump out of the water. And now that we have the ice arrows, there's a few things we can do, uh, progressively. Uh, a good little rule of thumb for this dungeon is to follow the pipes. As you see, we just cut on the, re the red pipe, and, uh, hold on, what am I missing? Okay, never mind. We just cut on the, uh, the red pipe, and you can see it leads back up to that main, ah, I missed it. Lovely. That's another annoying part of this dungeon, jumping on these freaking rotating things, propellers looking things. But, uh, really. It gets you so disorientated when you get caught in the current, too. But yeah. Anyways, so we can come over here, and as you can see, that red pipe is still there. I believe I may have missed something. Let me, uh, I'm actually going to double check there. If I'm right, then I'll cut to it. If I'm wrong, then I'll cut back here. Okay, I'm probably... Dude, stop running the wall. I'm probably not going to cut any of that out, but yeah, I was. I thought about it for a second, and I remember what I had to do. Again, with the, the, the annoying switches. I just... I don't... What is with this dungeon and the, and the switches? Maybe it's just an aesthetic thing or what? But anyways, as I was saying before, it's a good rule of thumb to follow the uh, the pipes, and that's exactly what I did. As you can see, the, the red pipe on the left, or excuse me, right, has a... Uh, those little wavy pulses that indicates water is going through it, but the one on the right doesn't. So what we have to do is cover, come over here and use our newfound ice arrows to make stepping stones in the water, which we can jump on top of or completely miss. You know, if that's your, that if that's what you really want to do. Wow, that was completely pointless. Get out of the way, bonefish. Climb on top. Climb on top of. Uh. Okay, let's try this again. Shut up. Okay. Jump. Jump. And jump. Thank you. That took entirely too long. Alright, and again, just random pointless room for no real reason. We have a water choo-choo here, which we're going to lure over here. Let him get kind of close and miss completely and get hurt. What? Dude, stop jumping when I'm sh Okay. If you kill him, he'll respawn, which is what we're going to wait for right here. Give it a second. But anyway, there's a water choo-choo. Wow, he's right in front of me. And when you shoot him, he frees into a block. You can push and grab, and push and all that. So that's wonderful. That's how we're actually going to get up here. And yes, I know there's a bomb up here. I'm probably just going to tank the hit. Because why, why not? Boom. Wow, I actually made it all the way through that without getting hit. That's wonderful. 
just kind of random pointless room you have to backtrack in and, and hit the switch to make the water go through. I don't get it. I don't know if they just thought the dungeon was too short or what was going on in their heads, but I, I don't know. I just don't know. And there's no stray fairies in here. Again, just double checking. So we can head on back, and I'm going to head back to the main, uh, main area thing. Should be really easy to do again just random backtracking for no real reason we're gonna swim down here and i'm actually gonna meet stop hitting your head and go all the way thank you there you go all right so we're gonna come through here back to this room if you remember and there's a few things we didn't or back to the uh the room where we found the small key at the bottom of the pool we also got the compass in that's where we're heading and now that we have the ice arrows, we can... Whatever. I don't even care anymore. Now that we have the ice arrows, we can uh, do some extra stuff there. And as you can see, I'm running low on magic between my, my electro shield and everything else. So, again, it's a good thing they give you the magic and all that. When you need it, which, you know, apparently I don't need it right now. So. <laughs> There's probably some there at the bottom of the pool, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm sorry, I just wanted to take out my frustration on that thing a little bit. Nope, get, get, get off of them. See, hopefully we have enough magic to do this. I'm gonna have to make sure to do it in one try. We're just gonna shoot some ice. <sighs> We're just going to shoot some ice all the way up here, being super cautious because I don't feel like doing this again. Way over here, and randomly, here's one random little frozen area, and they give you plenty of magic here. And yeah, I get fro I get frozen in the water temple. How? I don't know. Is that ironic? That's not ironic, is it? But anyways, that was random ice block that you have to use your fire arrows for, but get used to it, because remember how in Ocarina of Time you had to switch out between the, uh, iron be the iron boots and the regular boots a lot? Yeah, in this one it's fire and ice arrows. I know. Wonderful, isn't it? I really like that in the 3DS remake they streamlined the switching of items. That made so That made everything so much better than that. But anyways, you may recognize this thing. It's a little bit different. He's not on a terror list time, but it's the same little frog as before. We're actually just going to shoot him up. And he gathers his snot bubble and roll out of the way quickly because he'll expand. And if he catches you in that, then he honestly just beats the crap out of you. And as you can see, we just freeze him while he's in the air like that and shoot him when he falls down. Right there. Uh, word of advice, as you can see, when he's falling, you may see that, or when he's g gathering everything back up, he, uh, did he fall yet? There he goes. Alright, see how he, like, has his stalactite there? Do not shoot him while that stalactite is still there, because he'll fall and still end up trapping you. It's a strange little, oop, nope, go away. It's a strange little mechanic that I don't honestly get that much, but, uh, whatever. And I'll, I'll demonstrate it just so you know what I'm talking about, because I kind of rambled there for a little bit. I see. Just kind of roll out of the way there. But yeah, watch this. See how he's not all the way up? And he just kind of, like, goes back down? That's what I'm talking about. I, like, anytime there's that last little drop in the goo, he'll do that. So be, be careful about that. And I believe we almost got him here. I think we got one more hit. We didn't lose many hearts in this one, either. Ah, oh, crap, he may actually eat it. Okay. Whew. He does a lot of damage when he catches you in that, so be, be careful. I believe it's like two hearts, I think. So, there you go. Killed him. Wonderful. Oh, and he turns into a frog, too. Wonderful. We're actually not going to do anything with those guys right now, but there is something we can do with them later. But, uh, hey, frog. Wonderful. Alrighty. So we're gonna go gather up some stuff and see if we can't get some of our hearts and magic back. Or arrows, why not? Ah, that's fine. And as you see, one door's still locked. Well, the door that's locked is actually the one we came in, but this one is unlocked. How convenient. We get to come through it here and get the last big item of the temple dungeon, the boss key. So you may be thinking, wow, we've gathered a lot of stuff pretty quickly. We have, but there's still a little bit to do in this dungeon temple. So, don't get too used to it. That's something Majora's Mask seems to do, is give you the stuff pretty early, and then just make you, like, work your ass off to finish the actual dungeon. But there's a little hookshot thing up here, which we can hook onto and get out of here. And now that we've done that, we can finally, finally, 
head back on to the main hub. So we're just gonna head dive in here and head on. Okay, so now that we're back here, and again, like I said before, now that we whoa, that was weird. Dynamics. Now that we have the ice arrows, there's a few things we can do. Uh, first one we're gonna do is we have to play jump on the propeller again. Oh, how wonderful. We Timing is everything in this. I, I find it easier with the Zora mask for some reason. Basically, just jump a little bit beforehand. And see. Wait on the next one to come by. Oh, I overshot it. Oh, this is going to be a fun, fun episode here. <laughs> just like 20 minutes of me trying to hit this daggone pillar. Daggone. This daggone pillar. Let my southernness come through. Right, I'm not going to risk it. Wait for the next one. Uh, we. <laughs> oh my, my lord! All right, don't grab on that one. I'm gonna try, and if I remember my sides right, yeah, I can get over here. I only have to do this once instead of twice. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not easier with the Azor mask. Let's try it with uh, Human Link. See if that's any easier. Nope. Alright, finally made it. So we're gonna climb up on this little, uh, catwalk? Is that what you would call this? I don't know. As you can see, there's a waterfall right here. We can actually shoot that waterfall and freeze it. How wonderful is that? I mean, come on, that's awesome. And we're gonna come up this ladder and head on through this door. Yay! There's a few little things here. Uh, as you see, there's a green switch there, which we can't really do much about right now. Uh, we're not here for that. We will probably go ahead and switch it while we're here, just so we don't have to backtrack, but really we're here for another reason. And... Let's see. We're going to hookshot up here. Get rid of these barrels. And that, that the, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Thank you. Get, get the tech tight. Yeah. Why didn't that kill the tectites? That that irritates me. Everything irritates me. I, I hate I hate the world. <laughs> oh man, I really do not like this dungeon. Can you tell? Let's try this again. All right. Let's see, is there any way I can kill? It's just gonna freeze it. Let's uh, take the regular arrows out or fire arrows. I'm gonna do fire arrows because I want to take out some frustration and kill this here tectite so it doesn't bother us. Then we're gonna get the ice arrows back out, and if you look up, you can see there's a graded ceiling with a treasure, and there's a treasure chest in the middle of it, uh, above that light there. And there's these little pillars here, or little holes in the floor here. And you may be able to see through the grates and see if they have hookshot uh, things, things up there. Well, while there's one over here and one at the very, uh, you can't see it because the pipe's right there. Hey, look, a wonderful pipe. Uh, but there's one at the front door and one on each side corner over here. That one is going to be in the center. If you hook shot on it, you're just going to fall right back down in the water. This one, however, is a little bit off center. So you're going to shoot some water ice pillars. Come over here. Give Link a concussion. Whatever. Why not? You got to be quick about this because these ice pillars do... <sighs> these ice... Climb on the thing and I'm going to have to shoot another one really quick. You know what? Fine. Whatever. I'll meet you back here. Alright, and we're back. Man, I'm, I'm sorry for all the failitude in these episodes. I don't know what has been with me, and I'm actually going to go this way instead. No, get the freaking frick, fracking... <sighs> My controller is starting to anger me again. I don't even know why I shot those first here. I'm just going to come right over here. Climb, climb it. And I'm actually going to shoot another one so I have some fresh time for it. There we go. And again, you need to be fairly quick with this. And it can be it can be a little tricky, honestly. But easily enough, we can get up here, and grab this chest, which is the first or the not the first fairy, but the the first ray fairy we've gotten in a while. There's 20 ruby up there if you want to get it, but I'm not gonna worry about it. And while we're in this room, just so I don't have to backtrack and come here, because as I mentioned before, I really do not like backtracking. We're going to shoot some ice platforms. That's what I should call them. Not ice pillars. What the hell am I talking about? We're going to shoot some of these and come over here to get this uh, green switch. 
And again, it's not going to do anything right now, but it will soon enough, so don't worry about it. I'm just doing it a little bit out of order because I feel like this is the best way to streamline it whenever you're... Can I not? Okay. So I feel like it's the best way to streamline it when you're getting the stray fairies. Yay. Alright. And as always, switch it. Just like nothing. And I believe that'll be it we have to do in this room. Thank God. <sighs> oh, it does do something. It lets the green water go. Ah. Shows how much I know. You know, practice file and everything. And I'm just, I'm just stupid. Whatever. Uh, I'm not trying to be so discouraging, but I really do not like this dungeon at all. And there's some magic down there we're actually gonna go get, just so we don't have to stop and get any more later. Dive, dive like you've never dived before. Yay! Hi. Right. So, anyways. Yeah, I really, I try, I'm, honestly, I'm not being this pessimistic about this dungeon, uh, on purpose, but it's just, it's such a tedious dungeon to me, and I really don't like it that much. I, I don't know, I'm sorry for being irritatingly, uh, pessimistic about it, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop moaning and groaning about it. So one last thing we're gonna do in this episode before we call it one. Uh, I thought about trying to make this dungeon on the last two episodes, but honestly... I'm trying to cut down on length a little bit at a time. I'm kind of testing the waters a little bit and seeing how it goes. So we're going to do this one last day and then call it an episode. And it's really quick so we don't have to worry about it too much. But we're actually going to come in here and look, get our hookshot up, excuse me. Hookshot, get our hookshot up, get our hookshot out. And hookshot right on over here. To that little, as you can see now, the the red water red pipe is on. We have a little platform, uh, a geyser to land on. So we're gonna land right on it and jump over here. And hey, look, a switch. How convenient. And again, like like I said before, this this dungeon, I can you can tell it took a lot of thought and concentration to really put it together and make everything work. This whole thing with the the water wheel powering the whole dungeon, you know, it's it's impressive. I will say it is impressive, but it's still annoying. Just to be perfectly honest with you, it's annoying. But, yeah, yeah. So we're going to cut the red one on like we did, and we're actually going to cut the yellow one off. And don't worry, the yellow geyser will still be going, so you can still get up to the, the main uh, main hub where that giant water wheel is. It's just going to be going the other way. So let's get on up there. Get on up there. Uh, actually, I don't want to be. I find it easier to jump on these geysers when you're human link for some reason. I, I, I don't know if everybody is like that, but I've always found it easier personally. So, yeah. Come on. There we go. Alright, just ride the elevator just like we did before. I'm not even going to bother with these freaking sculptures. Screw you got. I can't even finish the sentence, man. Really? Alright, jump on the geyser. Right over here. Huh? And head back on the main hub. So, anyways, like I said, this is going to be the end of this episode. Uh, as always, like if you like, don't if you don't. Uh, leave a comment, tell me what I did right, what I did wrong. Subscribe if you want to see more. And thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for putting up with me for this long. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good day.